My name is Ashita Cabra, and I'm the founder and CEO of Byrotation, the world's first social fashion rental app. I created Byrotation to empower the average consumer to take charge of their fashion consumption habits. You can save money, make money, dress well, make new friends, and save the planet one rental at a time. This is our brand podcast on rotation, where I'm joined by inspiring members from our community. I'm so proud to say that this podcast is brought to you by NetWest Business Banking. Whether you're thinking about starting a new business or are already running one, NetWest could help you meet your goals sooner, no matter how big or small. I know how tough it is running a business, and we are so grateful to all the other businesses and partners for their support. NetWest is here to support your business with many tools and tips. So if you've got a big idea that you want to turn into reality, what are you waiting for? Search NetWest Startups to get started. With NetWest, tomorrow begins today. Business banking is available to eligible customers in the UK. Specific account eligibility applies. Today, I'm joined by Rokea Kanum, the founder and director of sustainable luxury brand Kanum's. Best known for beautifully embellished statement pieces, Kanum's has been featured in publications such as Vogue and worn by the likes of Nicole Scherzinger. Rokea founded Kanum's in 2018 as a side hustle, taking inspiration from her parents, both garment makers and Bangladeshi immigrants. The respect they have for their craft is the very principle that Rokea founded Kanum's on. Rokea, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to do this podcast with you. First things first, and I'm asking every guest, what's currently on your rotation? What's on my rotation right now in terms of nail colors? I'm always on the same nail color. It's called 429 Boston University. Music. I'm always listening to Beyonce or Jay-Z or ASAP Ferg in terms of needing some sort of like motivational push. Um, I'm currently rereading Shoe Dog by Phil Knight because I went to the Air movie screening last week and I found it so inspirational. Oh, this is the one about the Nike founder. Yeah, about yeah. This. It's the yeah. Michael Jordan story with Nike and it just reminded me of when I read the book and then when I watched the Michael Jordan uh, documentary on Netflix and I find him incredibly inspiring. So I'm revisiting the movie as well as Michael Jordan's documentary. That's so cool. Are you one of those people who makes notes in the book when you're reading them, like highlights them and like, you know, kind of makes notes on your phone or writes them down and tells your team? Well, I actually don't tamper with my books because I like to preserve them, but I do take mental notes. I put notes on my app and I just kind of regurgitate whatever I've learned. And I do kind of tell my team, this is what I've um, read from this book, X, Y, Z, and I recommend for them to read it too, because I very much apply a lot of what I've learned to my day-to-day, whether personally or professionally. Yeah, I mean, as a founder and as a leader, and, you know, this is your first time being, like, you know, being an entrepreneur as well, isn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. There's always, like, this pressure for us to be inspiring and, you know, lead the way and be a visionary to our team. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about who Rokea Kanum is? Who am I? Who is Rukia Kanum? If my friends or my colleagues were to describe me or my partner or my family, they would consider me a very passionate individual. I'm very militant, but also very calm, friendly. I'm very laid back, but I also take myself quite seriously. I think I'm a bit of a paradox. You've got many layers. Yeah, yes. yeah, very multifaceted. And and tell us about founding Canoons. How did that happen? I mean, I've said it obviously in my intro, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. How Canoons started is a bit of a long story, but just for context, I'll just give you some little details. I got made redundant from my job and I, I was left unemployed for about 18 months. Um, so it was a huge struggle. I was going back to back with searching for jobs, job interviews, rejection, failure. It was a constant process. And I told myself maybe it would be a good idea for me to figure out a stream of income that would create some sort of security for me. During that process, I still continued to apply for jobs. And then I eventually found a full-time nine-to-five job that paid decently because financial security is important. And then what happened was I just decided that I would use the nine to five as a security, but also, you know, create an additional stream of income. I recognize a niche with luxury evening statement styles 
that were affordable, but gave you that kind of luxurious experience as a customer. So I thought I'll work my nine to five and then I'll start this side hustle, which will just give me an additional stream of income that I need to, that I could use for my, I don't know, personal goals or whatever. And that's how Canem started. And I didn't realize at the time that it would become something bigger than it was. And then I'd be leaving my nine to five job and I'd be here today. I love it because that's something that we have in common. You know, we both used to work in finance and for us, we founded our respective businesses at Side Hustles. Um, what I think is really cool is the designs that you've created. I mean, I love them. Uh, I wore one recently yeah. to the British Fashion Awards. It looked Awards. amazing. It was so cool. <laughs> and I was so happy to be dressed by you because you're also stocked on the Buy Rotation app. Yes, we uh, are. I mean, I'm loving seeing all the pieces being placed on Nicole Scherzinger, like a lot of other famous people that I've seen on the app. Canems is everywhere. You guys are having such a big moment. I mean, you're stocked in, on Revolve as well in the US. I love that bright purple dress that you have. Funny. Did you ever think it was going to go this far? Not for one second. I genuinely believed that I would be running Canems from my bedroom forever. I didn't think that I would have my own office, my own studio. I'd have a team of wonderful, amazing women selling my dresses and my designs globally. It's crazy. I feel like I've still got an element of imposter syndrome, which finds it very challenging to accept where I am today and Canem's is as big as it is. So yeah, I think it's still a work in progress mentally. I love that because you've probably got that sort of immigrant drive, which I feel I have as well, which is that um, there's still a lot more to do. Yeah. But once in a while, it's good to, I guess, take a step back and look at where you were, yeah. you know, back in 2018 and where you are today. Yeah. And it's sort of like a nice surprise that you've come so far and everything else yeah. is sort of, I guess, a bonus as well. A hundred percent. I think like a lot of individuals kind of maintain their present situation without going past that and looking to the future. And that was definitely mu very much me back in 2018. I had my short-term goals and I was actioning those short-term goals. I achieved them. I wasn't looking forward, but now the success that I've seen from what I've achieved with Canoms has given me a immense sense of confidence with any other goals that I wish to achieve in the future. And I 100% know that hands down, I can achieve anything that I want just based of you know the product demand the happy customers that we've got mm. the you know community that we've also created so yeah so what's next I mean what are you working on at the moment is there anything you can share with us so far we've worked on our bridal collection which is insane when you actually physically look at the styles and the design and the intricacy you will be stunned We've recently launched it and I'm incredibly happy with it. It's so exciting because, I mean, um, I'm thinking about like Bangladeshi culture, Indian culture, you know, we're both from South Asian culture. And I guess being a bride is like one of the times we wear the most embellished pieces ever. So I'm super excited to see the, the sort of Western modern take. That is exactly what Canoms is about. And when I first started Canoms, the whole intent and purpose was combining my love for my Eastern intricacies, which I grew up you know, observing throughout my childhood and combining it with my love for Western aesthetics, whether it's a jacket or it's a modern contemporary style dress that you wouldn't see in South Asia, you know, Bangladeshis, Indians or Pakistanis. And I feel like I've managed to perfectly integrate both. And you can definitely see this from my designs and especially from my bridal collection. I love all your pieces because I think that the right level of like you know, sexy, alluring, but also modest. Yeah. And they've got that sort of nod to South Asian culture, which is absolutely me. So I'm super excited that I get, to, that, you know, that we have this brand called Canoons, which is incredible. I'm super excited for all the new designs that are to come. I'm currently also working on our SS24, which will include a lot more storytelling about my heritage, a lot more kind of artistic prints, and embellishment, very colourful, because I feel like when you go back to Bangladesh and there's certain landscapes or certain sceneries that you see, certain colours that I've grown up with, you know, viewing in my childhood or wearing in my, throughout my childhood, I'm incorporating all of that into our new designs and I'm so excited for it to come to into, into fruition. <laughs> 
Yeah, I love it. And and I'm sure a lot of your fans definitely want to know a little bit more about the maker and where all this inspiration is coming from. So I'm very excited to see what comes in SS24. I'm sure you're going to love it. What's the end goal for Rakea and Kanums even? And it could be it could be outside of Kanums by the way. Yeah. What is the goal for me personally? Uh, if I'm honest, I would just say I'm an ethnic minority woman who comes from a working class family. I grew up in a predominantly Bangladeshi community. We didn't have much growing up. So essentially for me, in terms of goals, I would just say I just want a comfortable lifestyle. I don't want anything. I, I don't have any extravagant plans or anything like that for me personally. I just want to be happy, mm. at peace and content for Canoms. And Canom's goals, I would just say, to be honest, I'm pretty much very happy with where we're at right now. I'm happy with the slow and steady growth. I'm happy with recognising the several opportunities that Canom's has in terms of our B2B, furthering our opportunities with stockists, very much going even more global than we are right now. Um, I would say in terms of Personal goals that are applied to my business goals, just seeing people like Beyonce or Jennifer Lopez in Canons will mean so much to me. I think it's like a certain sense of validation or something that I think is important to me only because these are women that I grew up listening to or during certain moments of trials or tribulations that very much like uplifted me. That would mean a lot to me. I'm totally with you. I mean, those are my icons. With stars like Beyonce or Jennifer Lopez, in terms of their music, I'm very much an individual who re reads the lyrics of certain songs and I use it as motivation for myself. So again, going back to their types of music and, music and the individuals that they are and what they have represented, I would love to see women like that wearing canoms and be proud of that. So those are my goals as well as world domination. <laughs> I love it. Um, and is there any like sort of particular city or country you really want to see Canoms in? Obviously, you're in the UK or US, you ship globally, but where somewhere, I don't know, if you went somewhere on holiday and you saw someone wearing Canoms and you were like, what? So right now, we are also stocked in Harvey Nichols in Kuwait, which I launched um, in February last year, and that's been super successful. I feel like I would kind, kind of like to expand our presence in the Middle East and the GCC, which will be great. Um, more so definitely in the US as well, just based on our analytics, I've seen a lot of demand and response from the UK, US and the Middle East. And I feel like when I recognize that there are individuals that are liking the brand from those demographics, that's where I want to reach into further. I've also seen a lot of interest from Australia or Ireland. And yeah, I'd love to see some physical presence over there as well. I love it. Just everywhere. Maybe yeah, a pop-up I mean, or something. Even. Everywhere would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Singapore as well. That would be cool. I'm from Singapore. Oh, I would yeah. love that. People yeah. there would love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but tell me, was there a particular moment where you were like, oh my God, like Kanims is going to be massive? Oh, I feel like there have been several moments that have made me feel like that. And I don't know if it's called gold medal syndrome, but every single time I've been in that moment where I'm like, oh, wow, Canoms is going to be something and I've accomplished a certain milestone. Then it comes to the gold medal syndrome and I'm like, okay, but what next? I've done this now. What's next? Wait, what is the gold medal syndrome? I it, don't know this one. It's where you've achieved something. Like you, you're working so hard. You've spent months towards a certain goal and then you achieve it. And then after you've achieved it, you lose your sense of purpose and then you feel kind of deflated and you think what's next so there's constantly what's next what's next what's next even though you've achieved something so incredible so I think the moments where I realized that Canoms was actually a thing is a combination of several amazing moments for me it could be from a time that I went for dinner at Novikov and I'm seeing this woman wearing Canoms and I'm thinking oh my god that's my brand and I actually approached her and I said wow that jacket is really cool and she said oh it's from a brand called Canoms I was like oh nice you, you didn't know? tell her no. it was you oh my god I've I love this, I've got this weird thing that I, when I see people wearing Canoms or when someone compliments me wearing Canoms I can't say oh it's my brand I feel really weird you're so low-key I know and I need to get rid of that because 
no, that's not good. People want to meet the maker, yeah. I, especially when it's sort of like an independent brand where you can meet the creative director. Yeah. I would love to meet everyone who's made the clothes that I'm wearing. This is 100% something I'm working on right now. And I'm just building my confidence in kind of like letting people know who I am. Um, other moments would probably be when Canoms was in Vogue. That was a huge moment for me. I was incredibly proud that our designs were so beautifully displayed. Um, an entire page as well. An it entire was part page. of the cover story, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was so great. Cool. Another moment, definitely when I launched in Harvey Nichols, I did a, a video piece on their social media with their marketing team. And they were telling me how so many of the designs were sold out within minutes. And they recognized the fact that they had a lot of demand for the brand even before the brand was stocked in the store. People came in asking, do you have Canoms? Which is incredible for me. And then I also just having that presence in the United States now with being stocked at Revolve, that was a huge moment for me. And just seeing the constant reorders that they're placing is another sense of validation that, wow, people actually like my designs. So I think a combination of all those moments have shown me, wow, Canoms is actually a thing. I love it. Um, and, and I love the fact that customer love is super important to you and you're very close to the customer. Uh, but do tell them who you are because we want to yeah. know who you are. We love it. And you're a great person. Thank you. I will do. So we always talk about the highlights, right? And, and you know, I mean, Instagram, for example, is essentially a highlight reel. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you struggle with that you're still working on? I think that when you're an entrepreneur and you're sharing your journey on social media, again, as you've said, it's very much a highlight reel where people are seeing all your accomplishments. And I feel like for me personally, I have kind of maintained a sense of balance where I do share with my community on my personal Instagram certain challenges that I've been facing. But as the business has been growing, I have reduced the number of times I'm communicating as much because... I don't know, a sense of privacy or professionalism or whatever it may be. In terms of things that I might be finding challenging at the moment, I think just adapting to the growth of the business. And I don't think this is something that many people talk about when running a business that comes from a very, very small start with not much backing, bootstrapping, all these kind of things. No one talks about how hard it is to run a business, manage yourself and manage a team. I read a very small book, Harvard Business Review on management, and it kind of dissected those three areas, managing your business, managing your staff and managing yourself. You don't think that when you start a business, it's just about managing the business, but it comes with so many different areas that you need to kind of dissect and apply loads of lessons to. So I think that's been my most challenging part. Yeah. And I mean, we've never been trained to do these things no. either. So we're just kind of picking and learning on the job and we're human, you know, we're, we're bound to make mistakes. A hundred percent. And I think a lot of people think that when you've got a business that you should know everything from the beginning. I recognize myself as being a work in progress with my business management, the way I manage my team, my leadership skills, everything is a work in progress for me. I'm very adaptable. I'm, I've considered myself taking a lot of accountability for myself when I've made a mistake, but I also am resilient and I adapt things that I've learned and move forward with it. I'm very solution-based. So I think as much as it's been a challenge, I'm open to the further challenges that are going to be presented in the future because I know it's going to come. Life is not rainbows and sunshine. Sometimes it's rain. And I think as a leader and an owner of a brand that's very much in the public eye, you need to recognise everything, whether the good, the bad, the ugly, as things that will always come along the way. And it's just about how you deal with it and how you react and how you respond. Yeah, and it sounds like you've got the perfect attitude as well to deal with, you know, the the trials and tribulations of scaling up your business. Yeah, 100%. I think my business over the last few years has taught me so much. I think one of the painful things as an entrepreneur who's bootstrapping is the financial losses. Again, something no one wants to talk about because everyone wants to show I'm super successful and I'm making X, Y, Z, you know, number of money and da, da, da. But no one actually talks about 
the financial losses that have really hurt your business and how you've adapted those lessons to learn and grow further. This is why I really love the book Shoe Dog because Phil Knight talks about his entire journey at Nike and all the losses he had and how he recouped and recalibrated and learned and applied and grew. So I appreciate a lot of transparency and honesty with entrepreneurs. Because we need that, you know, we need that authenticity to know that we're not alone. Because it's quite a lonely journey as well, don't you find? It's a very lonely journey. As I said, a lot of people just are showing how oh, I'm doing great and I've got all these accomplishments and achievements. If you go on my personal Instagram, you'll see that my pinned posts are moments of achievements. But I try to communicate the personal relatable sides that individuals can resonate with hopefully mm -hmm. in terms of like my experience and my journey because I want to balance the both I don't want anyone looking at me or my life and thinking that oh she's so lucky she did x you know she just everything's such, perfect everything's perfect and yeah. everything's amazing because the reality is so far yeah you know touch wood touch wood I yeah touch no, my hair. <laughs> everything is great Everything is great, but it has come with a lot of challenging moments that you just have to kind of work on and yeah, get back up. And There's definitely a price to pay, blood, sweat and tears. And, oh, and 100%. People don't know that though. But yeah. yeah. So who is the real Rakea? I don't know. Some people have said to me that my social me on my social media, I come across like I've got a resting bitch face or I've got, <laughs> I look very standoffish. And someone actually messaged me on social media and she said, when I first met you, I... I thought you would be that, but you're actually super cute and friendly. You're like marshmallows. She said, she described me as marshmallows and I was like, thank you. Cause I think first impressions do count, but I want people to know that, you know, I have got a, an element of savagery because sometimes life requires that, but I'm also very compassionate, empathetic. I've been told I'm too compassionate actually, but um, yeah. That's who Rakea is. So, so if we bump into you somewhere, we should be like, oh my God, oh Rakea, can we take a selfie together? No. Can I hug you? <laughs> <laughs> no, because this happened to me. And I, I, I wrote this on my social media, on my stories. And I said, one time this girl stopped me on Oxford Circus and she was just like, oh, you're Rakea, uh, you're the owner of Canoms. And she was so nice. And I started crying and I thought, oh my God, how sensitive am I? Like I'm crying in front of this stranger. She probably thinks I'm a weirdo. So my, like if anyone sees me, 100% say hello, but don't be nice to me because I'll cry. <laughs> don't be nice to <laughs> I've never heard that one. <laughs> so we'll, yeah. be, we'll, we'll see you and be like, hey, what's up? I like your stuff. Bye. That's Yeah, fine. that works. Be cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, be cool with Rakea. <laughs> yeah, that works. You shared a lot of life lessons that you've, I guess, particularly picked up recently, given that the business was founded in 2018. But can you think of some, I guess, some sort of lessons that stuck with you throughout each decade? You might not remember from zero to 10. I definitely okay. <laughs> Maybe probably something like don't suck on your thumb, but you don't have to tell me that one. Um, I think the main lesson throughout life is to believe, I know it sounds so cliche, but honestly, just having that self-worth, self-value, self-love. And I think it's sometimes very much overlooked and it's still something that I'm working on as well, but I feel like throughout my decades, it's increasing and it's improving. And the amount of confidence that I have got within myself is immense right now. And the confidence that I have had has allowed me to get to where I am today through my relationships with friends, family, colleagues, my business. Getting my business to where it is at today has required that level of confidence and that level of confidence comes from self-worth and self-love. Just kind of eliminate that sense of imposter syndrome which comes from doubt and not doubting yourself. So I think loving yourself and believing in yourself is my main kind of life lesson it's so true right like as we get older all the cheesy sayings they become they, they seem to resonate yeah. more like if you're not going to love yourself then no one is going to love you yeah right and, and I feel like it's become so true and, and you kind of realize that it's not cheesy it makes sense definitely because I think like especially what's in terms of business if I've got a product and I'm trying to sell it to people and I'm trying to convince people you need to buy this brand, 
I need to have the confidence in that product. And at the end of the day, that product is my design. So I need to have confidence in my capabilities in order to convince others that you should wear it. You know, I think, yeah. So in essence, with everything, in every aspect of life, confidence and self-love. I love that. Looking back and given you're a creative director of a fashion house, what is one fashion faux pas that you've made? For me personally or a design at Canoms? Yourself. Myself. So I'm looking to embarrass you a little bit. No, not embarrass you, but more like something that you've learned from. What not if I to say repeat. nothing? <laughs> you're like perfect. I love that. No, oh, I love that. Hmm. Fashion faux pas. You've got the confidence. Nothing. Nothing is a good answer as well. I'm just going to brag a little. When I was at university and I graduated with my degree in law, I won best dressed student. I love it. To the entire, yeah. And I feel like that's kind of stayed with me, but I have had my moments. I've worn white skinny jeans with rips back in 20 something, you know. I think that was cool then though. I mean, it was cool then, but now <laughs> when I think back, I'm like, no offense to anyone who's wearing it right now. Or, oh God, is that rude? No, no, no? no that's great, guys. <laughs> Um, well, no, it, maybe it doesn't suit you and your style. Yes. I feel like there have been many, whether it's certain style jeans or tops that don't kind of accommodate my body style, which is absolutely fine. I feel like there's beauty in individuality. and But I feel like where I'm a mature individual and I know my body and I love my body, now I know what works for me and what doesn't work for me. I would say prints don't work for me. So that would probably be my personal, f yeah. That would reflect Kanum's as well. Yeah. We see where it's coming from yeah. now. Now I'm very excited for SS24. Yeah. To see cool. what you mean by prints. Oh, but the prints that I'm doing, the way we've kind of figured out the placement, I believe that it would work for so many different body types and it's very inclusive and it's based on learning from what hasn't worked for me and the way I'm thinking or the way I've overthinked prints. Mm -hmm. So the past faux pas in terms of fashion that I've committed was definitely some prints on some occasions, but I'm applying those lessons to my own designs to kind of prevent it. I can't wait to see this. Yeah, it's going to be cool. That is very cool. Okay, so that's a great part of the story as well for SS24. Yeah. I can't wait to see. Don't commit faux pas crimes like me. Yeah, when yeah. it comes to prints. Yeah, when it comes to prints. <laughs> Um, okay, my final question for you as part of the official okay. question list. Um, if you could be, if you could be an expert in one subject other than the one that you are in, mm -hmm. which is obviously fashion, what would it be and why? Oh, I would definitely be a relationship advisor. When I'm not sharing stories or behind the scenes of canons on my social media i'm probably giving relationship advice to people for free i'm yeah oh, yeah just like you? a q a um <laughs> me and my community we call it chats and chai um and they'll just give me i don't know scenarios or whatever's happened and then i'll give my non-biased you know advice but yeah i'd say a relationship advisor i'm a bit of a carrie bradshaw I consider I myself it. as, yeah. I love it. I did not get that reference, but I love it. So Sex in the city. I'm not that kind of gal. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Um, but that is super cool. I'm definitely going to hit you up for free advice. And, and okay. so will everyone else listening to the podcast series. Where can we find you if we want to stay in touch with you? You can find me on my Instagram page, R-X-K-E-Y-A, or on LinkedIn, Rukia Canum. And where can we find the brand? You can find Canoms on canoms.co URL, not .com or .co.uk, just .co. You can also find us on our social media pages such as Instagram at Canoms, TikTok at Canoms, Pinterest at Canoms. You can also find us on the Revolve website. Um, you can find us in store at Harvey Nichols Q8 if you're there. You can also find us on the Buy Rotation app where we're renting various styles for a very decent fee. I'm so excited so about this. Excited. You know that. <laughs> Available in the UK and US, by the way. Guys. Yes. Um, yes. So we will see you on there. For sure. Thank you so much for joining me on On Rotation, Rukea. It was so fun to have you on the series. It's so nice to chat to a friend on the screen. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was great speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
For an exclusive £20 off on your next Buy Rotation rental, make sure to use the code ONROTATION. This code works for new and existing users for rentals over £30. Happy rotating!